Okay, hey, welcome to another episode of On The Wrist from Off The Cuff. Today we have another really cool review for you from the brand Seiko. A little bit about them, they were founded back in 1881. They are Japanese in origin, but now have factories throughout Asia. They do cover all market segments from entry level to very high end. This particular type of watch is a dive watch. Now some key common characteristics and design language when you're looking for a dive watch. Of course, you're gonna want something with water resistance, typically with some type of screw down crown. You're gonna want something that's tough, legible, with a dive time bezel and a diver's extension is always nice if on bracelet. Now this particular watch actually offers you all of those things. This is a new for 2021 JDM release slash refresh of your mini turtle. This is the SBDY085. I actually purchased this one directly from Japan online store. Um, Kenta came very highly recommended, of course, if you guys are a fan of the Bruce Williams channel uh, here on YouTube, definitely uh, quality content there. Big shout out to Bruce. But Kenta took care of me. Um, and yeah, I've obviously, I purchased from a bunch of different dealers. I'd say the one thing that's different about Japan online store is they typically hold on to stock a little bit longer than some of the other dealers that are out there. And that is because uh, you'll they don't necessarily have the lowest prices, but I think that's the nice thing is one, they get things early, like this was in stock before anybody else had it. They had it on the site, ready to go. I was able to order it, they did the QC checks, sent it to me, and you can see everything aligns insanely well. So this is truly part of that kind of JDM spec there. Um, and then even a little bit of extra JDM quality control from Japan on that store. So big shout out to Kenta. So with all that said, let's go ahead, zoom the camera out, get this piece in hand and take a closer look. Okay guys, now as you can see, beautiful watch um, and it's something that's quite different I think for Seiko in that typically they don't want to give you a one watch there's very few they, they really just want to give you a bunch of crazy variations really wild and outgoing designs um, but for me that's what makes the mini turtle so special and why I already own two I own the previous black dial model as well as the blue dial model Love them both, and honestly, I think they're really the diver to have within that kind of 500 and under space. And you can find them varying prices, basically in between four and 500 bucks. Um, and there's new releases. With this, there's also a black DLC coated case without red accents on rubber, as well as a green dial variant, which was very appropriate for, you know, being within that mini turtle kind of nickname line. Now, of course, it's called the mini turtle because it does have that signature uh, cushion case from, uh, from Seiko that we all know and love. All these beautiful contours, as you can see here, Really great undercut, look at that. Transition between brushing and polished. You even get a bit of a high polished accent on the inner lugs here. Really nice. Um, nothing too super showy or stand out in terms of uh, the watch itself, but I think for me, it's just a really well balanced piece. And that pop of red just adds so much more to an already very enticing watch. Now, in terms of the dimensions on here, some pretty interesting ones. So 42.3 across in terms of diameter, it's only 12. 0.6 millimeters thick and it's only 43 millimeters lug to lug that's in look how tidy that is that's insane and that's why one of the reasons it wears so absolutely well it is of course in full stainless steel it's brushed with um polished accents and you can see there um also on the bracelet the bracelet isn't anything to write home about but it's honestly very comfortable and um you know this i all of the mini turtles i have Previously are still on bracelets and that's pretty much how they're worn unless I get in the water then I swap them out for rubber straps now uh, This does have Seiko's proprietary mineral hard lex. some of your low oh, mineral crystal You know call the ambulance, but I've honestly never scratched a hard lex crystal I have a lot of Seiko's and I haven't um, to say on the other side of it I have quite a few orients and honestly I never will buy another one with their mineral crystals because they've 
chipped or scratched pretty much on every occasion. So there is a different and there is a difference in terms of grade and mineral. Just because something isn't a sapphire doesn't mean that it is just as bad as the cheapest mineral you can find. So there's that. Also, I really enjoy the Cyclops on this one. Unfortunately, of course, uh, right as I, I get to that point, the hand wants to block. But I like, as you can see here, it's a circular Cyclops. So the magnifier there... Um, for me, it just flows better. I, I really like that. Um, it, it has a little bit, almost like a drop of water sitting on your crystal. Um, and, and I dig it. And obviously, this thing is very rounded. Um, so it really ties into that as well. Another unique feature is that it does have the crown at 3 o'clock versus 4 o'clock. So some of you will love that. Some of you will be like, that doesn't feel very Seiko-y to me. Um, but I think that's one of the things that really especially... In this model with the black dial and the red accents it just gives you something that is outside of your typical seiko realm while still being very intrinsically a seiko watch it still has luma right it still just glows and shines in the dark which is going to be great i'm looking forward to sharing that with you um and yeah for me this is the spiritual successor to the SKX, which was a successor to the Turtle uh, before it was reissued, uh, the full size. So um, this thing is awesome. So let's go ahead and, and get a, a touch of this uh, 120 click unidirectional bezel. Nice. Really easy to grip, even with the gloves here. stops right there on the 12 o'clock very nice alignment you also can see another great feature that not every watch even some very expensive ones do not do they actually do have a piece of crystal over the 12 o'clock loom pip so you can actually have protection it won't patina it won't dirty and honestly guys there's so many watches that i love with all these crazy you know bezel inserts with loom and it's great but they get dirty and dingy and oh man i just it 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 really bothers me and that's one of the things i love about this particular watch and yes it is an aluminum uh coated bezel insert but you know what uh, many watches had these types of inserts for a very long time. Um, and yes, uh, they will pick up some scratches over time. They can fade. But for some people, that is actually a positive because you can get that full, authentic wabi-sabi in terms of the way that you wear it. And uh, and really just picking up some personality with uh, and, and a story with your watch. So that's something that you can't necessarily get with, uh, you know, when you ha you're dealing with an insert that is either sapphire fire or ceramic um, also the matte finish on that bezel insert matches perfectly with the dial which is great now the crown is a screw down crown of course it's unsigned that's just kind of typical for the prospects line um, the case back is stamped and etched it is solid of course you do get that great uh, you know, famous wave pattern there, little medallion stamping. And then also you can see divers watch 200 meters, which means it does meet ISO standards. A nice, another feature really quick, as you can see, we do have made in Japan on the dial and on the case back here, uh, which is great. As you can see, kind of up here towards the lugs made in Japan. So very nice from that standpoint as well. Uh, as long as far as the bracelet goes, it's one of the more standard Seiko bracelets, but it does do the job. You do get micro adjusts. Um, you do have push button double locking feature. This piece is stamped, but it does have some nice contours that do help make it a little bit stronger. Um, and then you also have your diver's extension, which is very easy to kind of unclasp there, even with gloves on. Um, and then essentially you'd be able to get it over a wetsuit with that extra bit of relief. Um, and it's, yeah, it's quite comfortable. It has a nice amount of micro adjusts to it. And uh, when you think about 
how this piece, it's, it's articulated, which helps as well. Um, if you have a smaller wrist, for me, I have a pretty uh, decently sized wrist, so it actually um, is, doesn't really do me any extra favors, but that extra point of articulation on what would otherwise be uh, a bit of a long clasp definitely help as well. Now, in terms of the dial, hands and loom, guys, it's definitely what you'd expect from Seiko. Um, it's and and it works, right? It's um, a matte black dial, matte black bezel insert. Um, you do have these applied indices with very very nice and thickly applied loom, which is fantastic. It's diverse, 200 meters. You get the red text. That's really a fun feature and something that you see pretty much, uh, you know, more in, within vintage references for watches as well as, you know, becoming very popularized within the micro brand community in terms of playing with color. So it's nice to see a mainstream brand like Seiko take some steps to kind of go away from some of the more outlandish color schemes and, you know, the very special and funky additions, which are great. I enjoy those, but to give us a little bit of a pop of color on an otherwise very monochromatic, very well balanced and symmetrical um, dial and case and everything about it. Really, really like that. It just comes together. You also do get 20 millimeter lugs um, and they're drilled, which is great. Also, um, you get pin and collar connecting system. I know that's not everybody's favorite, but for me, the, the best thing about a pin and collar setup is that you set it and forget it. I never have to go back. I never have to worry about Loctite or anything like that or cross threading uh, anything. I'm just good to go. And honestly, I have a seven and a quarter inch wrist. And uh, yeah, even if I was to lose a pin or two, I would probably be okay. Um, or a collar because I, you know, I'll, I'll take uh, probably two links out of the watch anyway, just to get it on. So with all that said, guys, uh, let me go ahead, get this piece on wrist and uh, see how it wears. Okay, guys, as you can see on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, this thing wears absolutely beautifully, even up close here, guys, where you're gonna get that lens distortion and it's really gonna inflate the look and uh, and, and bloat it just because of the camera. Um, it still is because of that minuscule, that tiny little 43 millimeter lug to lug, it's still well centered and does not feel large on the wrist at all. Um, I think some people might even find it undersized. Um, so. And I dig that. I like that it is a bold uh, diver with a nice little weight to it, a heft um, without being heavy. Um, it's just so well balanced and it's it's honestly one of my favorite Seiko divers of all time. Um, and you guys know from watching the channel, I have some pretty sweet Seiko divers in the collection. And um, yeah, for me, this is definitely the go-to in terms of, hey, I'm looking for an awesome dive watch. This is it, guys. This the mini turtle line. Whether you get the Patty, whether you get um, you know one of the international models um, that were that were previously released, or this new JDM piece, I gotta say, it just wears excellent. It has real heritage. It's not some revival brand or anything like that. Um, and yeah, this is a very iconic look it really ties of course to kind of the heyday of dive watches back in the 70s um, when so many people were in the game and so many manufacturers and it's nice to see of course one of the original uh, dive watch producers still putting out great pieces today you can see those contours make this really comfortable on the wrist great mobility flexibility from that standpoint, quite legible, even at harsh angles here, as you can see. And uh, it's a looker, man. Look at that, the, the teeth on that bezel. It's just really putting, uh, you know, they have function in mind, which I can absolutely appreciate. This is not a watch that's just about looks, but it just happens to look really, really good. Um, so... I think Seiko really nailed it, and I'm so happy to see them actually refresh and update with some newer options because these things are sweet, guys. Definitely, if you I, and the best thing is this being released is probably going to make the older models that are still available 
even cheaper. So, I mean, it, it's a win-win. Uh, so with that, let's actually get this ready uh, for some loom shots, low light transition, and closing thoughts. Okay, guys, we'll go ahead and hit the lights here. All right, as you can see, this thing is just glowing away. Look at how bright those indices are. I love that it's thickly applied as well as they're just generally pretty decent sized indices and they're different. They're not indices you see every day on every other Seiko or really any other watch in general. It just, it has a very signature look, which I can appreciate, especially right now with so many divers that are out there that all kind of are following a very similar, um, style and formula. Now, one thing I do like to do within these loom shots is work in some low light transition so you guys can get an idea of how these watches render in more natural lighting situations that are going to be less than optimal because you're not always going to be, you know, um, out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight. Sometimes you're going to find yourself coming in and out of a building, maybe walking underneath uh, the shade of a tree or an overhang or just spending time in your favorite automobile. So I do like to kind of give you an idea of how the watch will render in kind of some of those mixed lighting situations. As you can see the matte dial, there are times when it's absolutely blacked out and then there's going to be times when the, it just catches the light and uh, it's going to give you more of, oh man, look at that charcoal effect, which is something that I think is really underappreciated about matte dial and matte bezel setups because they do capture light in different ways than gloss. So you do get a nice range in terms of feeling like, oh, you get some nice gray charcoal tones as well as the very, very deep blacks. And then you can also see that the contrasting red is going to play off of either. And then even if I get into some harsh lighting conditions here, very high contrast, uh, you can see, of course, Sego definitely stands up to that in terms of, you know, this would typically really show you guys any types of defects in the finish, any imperfections, and but you can see that the light just glides very uniformly over that brushing. And again, this isn't some super expensive watch. Yes, um, it's right in that five, four, five hundred dollar range, but it's a great watch for what it is. And honestly, it fulfills and checks all the boxes of any other diver that I've ever had. Um, sure, it might not have quite the specs, even from within the Seiko Corral, but it also doesn't quite cost the same price as, you know, my baby Marine Master or my 62 Max um, SBDC 101. So I do have some very nice premium divers from Seiko, but for me, this is really the standout in terms of that uh, entry level uh, hyper versatile, just something that screams, I'm not just another guy who, who, you know, who bought this generic watch. Um, somebody who's wearing a mini turtle definitely is going to be more uh, on the connoisseur side. Um, and yeah, that's fun, man. That's just part of the watch game. Um, so closing thoughts, guys, on the wrist, it definitely wears more like a 38 or 40 millimeter diver. And that is because of those really, really short um, and compact lug to lug uh, dimensions. So the specs can be deceiving. It definitely has a more modern feel um, than the Turtle Reissue, the traditional one, which is still a great buy um, and honestly also quite iconic. But for me, I really enjoy the modern blend that they're adding here. Um, and yeah, it just meshes a lot of uh, very iconic Seiko design cues and it creates something, you know, quite balanced and symmetrical. And uh, yeah, it's it's honestly the closest thing to an affordable one watch offering uh, from Seiko since the SKX uh, 007 or 009. So those are great. Uh, in terms of model variants, of course, we do have the red text unit here. There's also the black DLC coated model that comes on rubber. Uh, it does not have the red accents though. So one thing to note there, as well as a green dial and bezel option. Um, so 
that's awesome as well. Plus, you do still have the original uh, variations that are out there. There's the black and white. So basically this without the red, um, as well as the blue and white, which is basically this, but uh, it's blue instead of black and uh, no red accents. And then there's also the patty option. And I think there's a couple of special editions for various regions there that you can also find on the market. In terms of comparable models, guys, everyone probably right now is shouting at the screen, but I can get a Mako 2 or a Ray 2 or a Kamasu for so much less. Yes, you absolutely can, but in my you know, humble opinion as, as an owner of many Orients and, and you guys can check the channel. I like every time they come out with a new variation within that Mako, Ray, Kamasu, USA line, I reviewed them all. I enjoy them all, but honestly, they just, they're not, there's a reason why they cost less. They are a cheaper watch, um, in every aspect. They feel cheaper. They look cheaper and they are cheaper. This watch feels more premium, more together, more refined, and I can appreciate that. And it's not breaking the bank by any means, so I was happy to add a third mini turtle to my personal collection. Bottom line here, guys, Seiko's in-house qualities in a modern package that deliver a lot of value for the money. That's a pretty good, I think, uh, summary for a watch that is... 500 bucks or less so with that said let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you like the video please do hit like and if you haven't already please subscribe for more content just like this thanks guys yeah.